stop in Acadia. The French connection. We're overlooking French Bins Bay and it's pretty cool here. I don't know if you can see it clearly behind me, but it really is awesome. So Acadia National Park was just jam-packed with people. So we just drove through and I filmed some of the sites, but not very many. This is just on the side of the road in Acadia. Lots of beautiful spots throughout the entire park. And no visit to Bar Harbor would be complete without stopping at the Azalea Gardens. We absolutely love these gardens. They were designed by a man named Charles Savage, and they were designed to resemble a Japanese stroll garden. He actually used many traditional Japanese design features that were adapted to coastal Maine. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful place in all different seasons. We've never been here in the winter, so I can't speak about that. But we have in fall and in summer, just gorgeous. The gardens actually change throughout the year. They have a beautiful flowering cherry tree, and they have so many beautiful azaleas and rhododendrons that bloom from May to June. And in July, they have Japanese iris, smoke bush, rose, rose bay rhododendrons, and sweet azaleas. It's just amazing and it's beautiful it's free donation only you can stroll they have wonderful clean restroom facilities what a great spot isn't it pretty honey it's always so peaceful and pretty in here what are all the ribbons on the tree and the plants well? i don't know i wonder if they're due to be pruned or something of that nature lily pads over there in the water one year we came up during the fall season and the gardens were just ablaze with the most magnificent fall colors imaginable. I think we just had a perfect, perfect fall that year and the foliage was just superb, really beautiful. There's lots of rocks and beautiful vegetation and you can see Jay here trying to cross over the rocky path to the beautiful sand garden. He was he was really brave. I go very careful. Fire. I wish I could sing, because I really would love to be. My husband's sleeping. So we're back at the campground after a morning of exploring. Just a morning of exploring. We will be exploring more later. This is an extremely uneventful sunset. I mean, we've had magnificent sunsets here, and this was just not up to par, but I filmed it anyways via a time lapse from my friend's campsite in Bar Harbor, KOA. Hey guys, it's Tuesday, August 7th. I cannot believe that vacation is just going by so fast. Although we do have another week here, so I'm really thankful for that. It has been really hot. We've done a number of, you know, cool exploring things in the morning. And then the afternoon we just come back here and we swim in the bay. It's really calm water right now and it's unseasonably warm water for Maine. So. We're enjoying it. We're enjoying just floating out there forever in the afternoon. So this morning we're heading to Jordan Pond House and we're being picked up by friends and we're going there for popovers. It's a tradition of ours to have popovers at Jordan Pond House and it's going to be sort of like a brunch. So that'll be really fun. We just had a great time. We've sat around the fire. I've been really good. I haven't had any s'mores, but Jay's had a few. But we've just... Um, Vegging, a vegging vacation, which is what we really needed after the whirlwind of Canada. <laughs> so, I've had a couple of challenges with my skin in the sense of so much sun. So, in the afternoon, when the sun comes on this side of the motorhome, this whole front part is sunny, so I have a big beach umbrella on the edge of my chair, which shades me. But when you go in the water, I'm just depending on sunblock, sunblock and hats and, and whatnot. So our friends should be here pretty soon. We're going to head out with them. And the popovers were delicious. And Jay had a popover Sunday that was delicious. <laughs> and it's going to all be in his waist. I didn't even have a bite. Jude had no dessert. 
No, but I had two popovers. They were yummy. We all we all had two popovers and a beverage. That's mm -hmm. what our brunch was. Yeah. I had two iced coffees. The iced coffees were amazing. And Mike had an iced coffee. How was your iced coffee? It was excellent. Excellent, excellent. iced coffee. That's, this is a commercial Jordan, Jordan Pond Pons. house. Yeah. Not really. It's an experience, though. Yeah. It's, it's all tradition. about the experience. Well, one thing it's tradition. they got to know. We do it every year. They're expensive. They I'm took away lie. the free popover if you buy a $14 salad. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay extra to get the popover $4. An extra $4. Bucks. Four bucks. Four bucks. Popover. But, oh, they're so yummy. They were so yummy. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. Popovers in my tummy. <laughs> are your trees, are they? They're cedar trees. They trees. smell so nice. When we were in Canada, going yeah. down the driveway to one B&B, &B, yeah. Airbnb, yeah. outside you could smell. Oh, yeah. Since hubby's working, and I have no car, I could always catch a ride with some friends, but I think I'm going to do the shuttle bus. And I'm just going to shop around. Last year I got these amazing pair of earrings. And I sit here waiting for the island shuttle bus. I don't know. It seems like it's really delayed tonight. So I want you to know why I travel by RV. It's so that I have easy access to my yacht, which I have delivered to Bar Harbor. I'm gonna turn around and show you. I know the fog has come in, but can you see that big, big yacht? That is called Casino Royal. That's mine. I just didn't want to tell everyone. Oh, there she is. It's in the boil. Close the gap like that. But if it's I'm actually only kidding. It really isn't my boat. But it probably takes the same amount of fuel as my RV does to run. Well, probably not. Downtown Bar Harbor is beautiful even in the fog and beyond there is Bar Island which at low tide you can walk across all the way to the island and then climb up but it is just a beautiful spot fog and all I love going shopping here walking around downtown it's a little chillier than I anticipated but I had a great night exploring Hi guys, it's Monica. It is, well that's stupid, you know it's me. <laughs> I don't know why I always do that. Um, anyways, it is Thursday and it is August 9th. Jay left on Tuesday. He went home for two days, so he left late Tuesday afternoon and had a five and a half hour ride home. And he was going home mainly because he had a closing and a final walkthrough and you know, he really is very, very dedicated to his clients, and he wanted to be there. And um, so he left Tuesday and got home very late. And then Wednesday was, he did his final walkthrough. He packaged up my Nevaeh Skin Softening Serum that he sent out to the winner of that giveaway. And he also picked up a package for me from Octoly, which I'm super excited because he's going to bring that with him when he comes back today. And that package was like this hair texturizing stuff that Mala Robinson had raved about. So I went on the Octoly network and requested it. They approved me, and I'm really curious to try it. I have very thin hair, and I have been growing my hair out. Um, and I've been doing hair treatments and all that, so I haven't, I, I'm fortunate that I haven't really lost a whole lot of more hair, but, you know, I have very thin hair. So the hair texturizing stuff sounded really phenomenal, so I got approved, and they sent it to me, and I'm going to try it when he brings it up. I'm going to try it the rest of my vacation. I've also been using on this whole trip so far all the lippies that I got from Lancome, and those throwback lippies. I absolutely love them. When I first put it on, the very first one, it felt a little tacky on my lips, but it didn't dry down tacky at all. It 
it dry down very smooth, very nice, very moisturizing. I really love it. I did the video where I talked about getting that, and I kind of like was a tongue-in-cheek video. I found an old retro jacket of mine, a jean jacket that I loved. I put on an old, um, not an old, I put on a long wig that had been sent to me a long time ago from Uni Wigs, and I tried to create sort of a throwback look of that groovy hippie chick, you know, with the Lanacombe throwback lippies, my lovely, and I love that jean jacket, which many of you said you loved, and I put that long wig on with the hair clip to kind of like, you know, kind of relive the era of the way I maybe looked when I was a lot younger. Well, I shouldn't say maybe looked. But the interesting thing is the jacket still fit me, and I don't remember being as fat back then as I am today, so surprised that the jacket fit me. But it's an oversized jacket to begin with, and it's a very long jacket, so I really loved it. So anyways, um, so he's going to bring up the hair texturizing. I'm going to use that for the rest of the trip. I'm really excited to try that out because anything that will give me more texture to my fine hair is awesome. I don't have perms. I do color my hair, so I, you know, I pick my poison. Color seems to be my highlights and my frosting. Frosting, is that what you still call it? I think it's highlights and lowlights. I really like doing that. And I don't think I'm going to grow my hair much longer than it is now. This is going to be the way that I keep it you know, this length for a while. I, I do great when I put it up. It's when I wear it down that I have more of a hard time. And it's, of course, hard in humidity and on vacation. I'm not a glamour puss on vacation by any stretch. So um, it brings me to answering another question that you probably didn't know you had, but some of you have had. Doesn't make sense. About my motorhome. Uh, we bought our motorhome, we bought this motorhome used. We've had it, I think, maybe 15 years or so. I'd have to double check with Jay. We've had it a long time. But this motorhome, when we bought it, was used. It was built in 2001. So for vehicle standards, for motorhome, for camping, this is an old guy. This is an old beast. And when we bought it, we got a great deal on it. It's a high-end motorhome. But the owner that had it wanted to go to what all the rave was, was multiple slides. This only has one slide-out room. And so he wanted to get one that had two or three slide-out rooms, and so we picked this up. And, and because of that, I think we were able to really get what, back in the day, was without a doubt a high-end motorhome for a, a reasonable, reasonable amount of money. And we've enjoyed it. You know, we were fortunate they took excellent care of it. It has a very unique color. I fell in love with the color as soon as I saw it. It's a green color, but it's different in different lights. So it, it's like, you know, bright sunlight, it looks completely different than on a, a cloudier day. So um, I fell in love with the color. It, it does have a washer and dryer. Well, to be honest with you, I've never used the washer. Well, yes, I have. I've used it a couple of times. But more often than not, that's a feature I don't use when I camp. We like to camp. We like to go back to nature. We're both bike riders. We have our mountain bikes with us. We haven't gone into the park this trip, and we may not go into the park because we are in the wind down. But uh, we love to go into Arcadia National Park or anywhere and ride our bikes or ride our bikes at home up along the coast. It's just what we love to do. So we are more outside people. We have kayaks, bikes. We like walking. We like nature. So camping, we started camping in a tent way back when. And then we bought a used RV, a much smaller RV, and we used that for a while. And I kind of figured out what I liked and didn't like about the RV I was in. So when we went to buy another RV, I kind of had an idea of exactly what I was going to want. And um, so we are very much, you know, nature type people. I love stargazing. Jay especially loves stargazing. And when you're in Maine, the skies are so beautiful and clear and clean at night that you can see all the stars and all the planets. It's just amazing. So this is what we like. This is what we prefer. I could spend my money on a five-star hotel, you know, and I, I stay in nice hotels when I travel for business if I'm going on a convention, etc. But this is my happy my happy type of lifestyle. I And when I'm camping, I don't tend to get all dolled up at all. You know, I'm very, very plain when I go on vacations, usually. I mean, I do have my my land called Lippy on and I have eye makeup on and I actually have for shame black eyeliner on <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to but I do and um, and yeah and I just kind of clip some of my hair up and some of it down and I have no idea it's kind of overcast today I don't know what the day is going to bring 
but Jay has his closing at 1.30, so he can probably, he's going to drop off his paperwork afterwards. He can probably hit the road and be on his way back up here and by, say, 3.30, maybe four o'clock and but I'm not going to see him till maybe nine nine thirty maybe even ten I don't know it all depends on how the roads are for him it's a five hour ride a little quicker in the car obviously but he does make a lot of stops so I won't see him till tonight but tomorrow night we're having our grand lobster finale we usually have the lobster once or twice when we're here on vacation we buy lobster fresh, steamers fresh, clams fresh, and we cook them ourselves. And we usually go to our friend's campsite, and um, he has a bigger yard than ours, um, and he's waterfront too. So we'll be over there doing the lobsters and steamers, and I'll probably share some of that with you. I don't know, um, I don't know what the rest of the day is going to bring. It's, it's overcast, but it's not rainy. So that's good. I've been sort of editing my vlog. The Wi-Fi here is horrible, as is the cell reception. The vlog number 23, the one that went public this morning, Thursday morning, I gave Jay on a thumb drive to take home and upload from home, which he did. Otherwise, that would never have been able to, to be published. There's just no way it would have gone up with the Wi-Fi situation. I don't know when this will go up. But uh, last night, I walked around Bar Harbor. I didn't get home till really late. It was like after 10, and, uh, you know, it's uh, when Jay left on Tuesday, I knew he was going home Tuesday, and I decided I was going to do a two-day cleanse while he was gone. I've been trying the Isogenic Diet Program. I've mentioned it in passing before. It works really well in conjunction with my keto, low-carb lifestyle. So in my keto journey and my low carb journey i've always been all about good carbs you know i'll have a sweet potato on an occasion i'll have all sorts of vegetables and i will have fruits that are like uh, like berries strawberries blueberries blackberries raspberries i will have those types of good fruits so the isogenic program really works well with my low carb lifestyle and so i'm really pleased with that because i didn't know how well it was gonna mesh with that that lifestyle but anyways, I decided I was going to do a two-day cleanse. This is my third two-day cleanse. In I started this in the beginning of July and uh, actually the end of June. So this is my third two-day cleanse that I've done. And I decided, yes, right smack in the middle of vacation, I was going to do it. And that means I have not had a bite of real food since 4 p.m. on Tuesday. And it is now Thursday. I think at the time of this filming, it's probably, oh, let me look. It's 12 noontime, Thursday, so um, I have to go, and I could technically break it uh, tonight at 4, but I'm going to go until tomorrow morning. I want to have two overnights of no food, so I'm, I'm taking the supplements that are required to take with it, but this meta, it's a deep metabolic cleanse, and I felt so good after I did it the first two times that I knew that, you know, I'm going to do it once a month, so I just thought, you know, in the middle of my vacation with Jay gone for two days, I didn't have to cook, it'd be absolutely perfect, and so far it has been, it's, it's worked out really well, um, so, yeah, so I don't know, you know, uh, I have no idea what the rest of today is, I do know lobster tomorrow, when Jay gets here later tonight, It'll be too late, but I may go out somewhere. I'm not too sure. I had I had a great time going downtown Bar Harbor last night. Even though I was by myself, I went in and out of the shops. And I always feel so safe and so comfortable here. This is our 18th year camping here, and our 18th year camping on this particular spot. So I know the campground well. I know the people well. I've met friends here. I have friends here. Um, and then downtown Bar Harbor, I know my way around. So I got on the shuttle bus. It took a while to get down there. And then I missed the 8 o'clock coming back. I don't know if I already mentioned that or not. But I missed that coming back and came back on the 9 o'clock, which meant I got back here later than I had originally anticipated. But that's okay. I had a great, I had a great night, and it, it made my whole day go by super, super fast. And, and in the morning, I went shopping with my friends, and I actually found some the Venom cream in TJ Maxx up here. I couldn't believe it. You know, when you least expect it, you see it. So, anyways, I thought I'd end this now because I know I'm probably rambling way more than I should. Oh, I wanted to also say, 
you probably saw my Instagram clips that I added. You know, Instagram being more of a portrait vertical mode because it's cell phone, it's really difficult um, to add clips to a regular video. But I did, I did so many Instagram clips yesterday, I really wanted to share it with you because it's all about going down to Bar Harbor. And then, of course, you saw the two tail ends of the, um, the clips that I did with my, this camera. So, anyways, that's the scoop, guys. This is my lobby. Big boy. Hard shell. There's Jay. There's Mike. Just leaving the campground, and we are heading to... Point. Point. I'm hoping that we don't have a ton of people over there, but you never know. So that's our, our destination. I don't know ultimately what else we're going to do or where else we're going to end up. But we packed a lunch, so we're going to have a lunch either on the rocks or we're going to trespass in a spot we always trespass it to have our yeah, lunch. That, right? Except it's tradition to be with Mike and Judy. Yeah, but they went early. So. They went, yeah. So, anyways, that's the scoop. We're at Scudic, and I just filmed Jay opening up a couple of packs of his cards over there for his channel. If you don't know it, Jay has a channel, and he does mainly sports cards and collectibles, things of that nature. But Scudic Point is part of Acadia National, and it's just, it, I used to say it was really the quiet part of Acadia National because. It did, never really had a whole lot of uh, traffic, but since they last year, the last couple of years, they've been working on a campground over here, and they opened it up last year and this year, so the traffic coming in, you could see a lot of people out and about. Probably, I don't know, probably 75% more people here now that the campground's open, if not more, but still, we usually come here and take our you know, take a ride through this section, walk the rocks, and then we go find a place to have a, uh, a picnic lunch. Right, honey? How'd the video come out, babe? I'm looking at it. Looks like it's okay. Pretty good. Cool, so I'm hired? Yeah, I'll keep you. <laughs> I guess he likes the way I filmed his video for him. Sometimes it's hard to do a video when you're like just holding a heavier camera than you're used to and you don't have a tripod. But I'm gonna walk over here. Hoping you get to see a little bit of um, it's just really it's really cool here. I love it. So you know when we camp, I must say that I always say how much I love it, how pretty these spots are, and you know beauty is definitely in the eye of the beholder. And um, you know for me, I love soft sandy beaches and. I love the Caribbean and tropical places we've been to. We've done bear boating, you know, in the Virgin Islands. We've done bear boating in the Virgin Islands. We've done, you know, we've gone to the Cayman Islands. We've gone to, um, oh my gosh, we've, we've Hawaii. We've, we've done a lot of tropical islands and sandy beaches and I absolutely love it. But close to home, you know, the rocky shoreline, the smell of that heavy salt in the air, to me it's just absolutely perfect and um, oh I thought I saw a whale I just saw a fin come up who knows but to me it's absolutely you know stunning and perfect yeah we still have our picnic table this is the place that just as little empty little abandoned well I don't think it's abandoned it's for sale shack but it has an amazing water view and every year we've come here and had a little picnic lunch always with Mike and Judy and this is actually where I dropped my camera last year and busted my lens and now it's going to be just Jay and I enjoying our little picnic here at this table. I didn't bring a picnic uh, ta uh, tablecloth. That's usually Judy who thinks of all that stuff. She's so domesticated. She brings tablecloths. 
she brings up paper plates. Monica and Jay. We just rough it. Right, babe? I would love to own this little spot. I really would. It's like... I mean, the house is a tear down, <laughs> for sure. Did we price how much they wanted for this? I don't know. A couple hundred thousand, probably. A couple hundred thousand. But it's the lot. The lot is, like, amazing. I think, anyways. Beautiful views this way. I'm going to do a turn around. And amazing views this way. Ah, oh, really awesome views. And every year they just, they still leave that picnic table for us. I think they know we come here. And they probably say, you know, when the McGillicuddy's come, they need to have a place to have lunch. <laughs> I think. So like I said, we always come here with our friends Mike and Judy, and we always sit on this picnic table. Well, today I put our measly spread out. We had all our cameras on the table, my phone, his phone, our drinks, his sports cards, everything. And he was sitting right where he is, except his feet were under the table, eating. And I came around and sat next to him and sat down, put my feet under the table. I was the tipping point. We went head over tea kettle. <laughs> and the picnic table was on top of us <laughs> with our feet wedged in the feet. Went back just like this. Ah. <laughs> Jay's like, oh, and I'm like, oh, it was so, it was so shocking. I didn't, I didn't know whether to get mad or then I just started laughing. <laughs> I had just opened up a, a can of diet ginger ale. I'm wearing it all over my palm because the can went down before I did and it, it, and pour it out so now the my bum is you could drink ginger ale off my wet bum seriously oh my gosh it was so funny wasn't it yeah it was classic oh if if our friends were here it wouldn't happen because we now to come to think of it there's always four of us and we always balanced out the table perfectly just couldn't handle my weight it was funny it really was. Thankfully, we're not hurt. And thankfully, Jay decided to laugh at it instead of getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing was trying to figure out how to get the picnic table off of us and get out of the situation we were in. So we decided one of us had to climb out first, so Jay did. And I was stayed wedged, and he climbed out, and he balanced the table and held it so I could scoot out. And once I was out, you know, he let the table go until I was able to stand up and we would rearrange the table. But the weirdest thing is, you know, we had an open container of a made, tu made tuna fish that landed right side up. None of the, none of the tuna fish fell out. We had uh, a bunch of sliced cheese. It stayed in the container even though it was open. None of it fell out. The only no, they lost one piece of cheese. One piece of cheese. Oh, my gosh. And and my, my diet ginger ale that I'm wearing, that was all and of course Jay has a very expensive camera and he has expensive lens on it so he was worried about that but that was that was fine but if you could have seen us oh my gosh unbelievably stupid McGillicuddy's <laughs>